Good afternoon, crafters. We are live. My name is Hannah Roxbury and I'm the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts. And today we have a really exciting web launch for you. That's right, delivered in style. The eagerly anticipated collection has just launched on our website, Carnation Crafts. Co uk. So this afternoon, what we're going to do with this Facebook show is take you through the uh, various dies included within the Delivered In Style collection. We're going to touch on the ring and eyelet or the eyelet and ring collection, which also launched uh, alongside that today, and also the multi-box die. The purpose of these uh, Facebook shows is to give you a really good insight uh, as to the dies included. We're going to go through um, a couple of examples made by our fabulous DT so you can get an idea of how you could be crafting with these amazing collections at home. And we're going to round things off with a demonstration as well. Of course, this is live and interactive. So if you do have any questions as we go through, by all means, type up your questions. Uh, <laughs> I will do my very, very best. I always laugh at this point because I always promise to um, check the comments and try and answer as much as I can and, and make sure we're keeping on top of everything. But it is <laughs> it's so hard when you're trying to do all the things. I can see lots of people joining us already. So thank you so much for giving up your afternoons and joining us today. Let's have a little scroll back and see who we have got. We've got Soph and Teresa. Carol says, A up from Nottingham. Hello, Carol. Uh, Joe's here as well as Claire. Jan's here, she says, good afternoon. Hopefully it hasn't interrupted things. Who knows? Who knows who's trying to contact me at the minute? <laughs> if it's work, sorry. Um, you know, these things happen. Um, let's have a look there. Who did we get to? Jan. Good afternoon, Jan. Uh, Suzanne as well. Uh, Suzanne says, hi, Hannah and all the crafters out there. In bed, got a bad headache. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Suzanne. I do hope you feel better soon. Uh, Joe says it's so cold in Manchester today. Yeah, do you know what? It's chilly here. It's beautiful sunshine, but it is very, very chilly. Uh, Sheila says she's just stopped crafting so she can watch. Fabulous. Thank you, Sheila. Um, Jacqueline says good morning from snowy Colorado. Oh my goodness me. I bet that looks fabulous though. Uh, Pam's here as well. Lots and lots and lots of people joining us. So thank you, everybody. As I say, if you do have any questions as we go through, by all means, type them up and I will do my very best to answer as we go. Um, we're going to give it a little while just so everyone that can wants to join us live can find us and do so. And just a note on joining the live uh, Facebook shows. We will always give you um, advanced warning of when we're going live into our events page, um, the events section of our brand page, Carnation Crafters. So if you head on over to there, you can sign up. So you can basically mark yourself as going to the live shows and what will happen is once you've done that as soon as we go live you'll get a notification on your Facebook as long as you've got notifications enabled uh, to say we are live and you can join us directly through the event there as well. Carla's just joined us hello gorgeous she has a question oh my goodness are two Kit Kats too many Kit Kats it was like a tongue twister they are orange flavoured does that make a difference asking for a friend firstly don't be messing around with the flavours of Kit Kats. Uh, the only, the only acceptable um, point of difference for that is white chocolate Kit Kats. Um, apart from that, no. It also depends. Uh, I mean, it's multifaceted, isn't it? You know, are there four fingers or are there two fingers on these Kit Kats? Who knows? Uh, my personal opinion is you can never have too many of anything. Um, so indulge. And if you have any left, please send them my way because all I am craving at the moment is extremely disgustingly sweet things. Ah, Carnation have just said hello, Hannah Carr from the Carnation team. Well, I hope it wasn't you that were trying to get a hold of me, Carnation team. <laughs> I can only apologise for my phone going off in the middle of a, a Facebook show, but there we go. Um, so it says definitely can never have too many. Do you know what? And do you know what? It is exactly the same when it comes to crafting. So this collection delivered in style, we launched both Carl and myself. Yes, they let us in the studio on Create and Craft together at the same time 
very rarely happens, uh, back at the start of January. So it was part of our takeover show. It was sort of our big hurrah, we've got a new year, let's do a new launch. This collection is going to be your workhorse. So rather than bring you a specific theme, we're bringing you tools that can work throughout the year. So included within this collection are things like backdrops, florals. Of course, florals are perfect for near on every single occasion. We've got our characters, we've got cakes, we've got butterflies, all sorts of things that you can go to in times of celebration. And, you know, quite rightly, times where you need to send someone a little pick me up as well. It's this collection that's going to be able to do that for you. So shall we get started and have a little look at what is included in the Delivered in Style collection? Let me start with these two beauties, okay? These are your 3D backdrops. Within the Delivered in Style collection, you get both the circle and the rectangle. So instantly you're ticking at two different shapes of cards. Within these dies, you get the mats and layers. So the surrounding dies that you can create, not only your mats and layers, but also things like apertures and things like card blanks from. The great thing about these is all of those little cuts, all of those little blossom petals that you see will cut into your card, which gives you this immense sense of texture across the background of the design absolutely gorgeous. Now, let me just show you, because I think it always works so much better when I, I physically show how these look. Here we have the rectangle. This was created by Pam. Thank you very much, Pam. And she's chosen to use that with that beautiful backdrop. Just cuts beautifully from plain white cardstock. Absolutely gorgeous. Take some time to use your pokey tool and poke out those little petals. Give them shape, give them roundness. And it just creates the most gorgeous backdrop. Similarly, I have got an example with the circle as well. So rather than using it as a card blank in its own right, as Pam has chosen to do here, this one, I'm not sure who made this one. I think I might have made this one. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, maybe it was Tina, I'm not sure. Um, but you can also choose to use them as toppers, but not only toppers, you can also use them to cut into your cardstock. So the actual dies themselves, so the detailed dies, don't have an outside cutting edge. You can use them in conjunction with your mats and layers to cut out should you wish, but then it gives you versatility to cut into your cardstock too, which is fabulous, okay? I'm gonna do a quick demonstration on these when we get started with the demos as well, just so you can see the different combinations and how these work. Next up for the Dervid in Style, we have got absolutely just hands down the most useful die set you are going to have in your collection, part two, okay? So this is the MIDI Arrangement Florals, part two. We brought you an original collection of MIDI florals back in, I think it was September. Um, so there is there is a, a version one, this is a version two. Um, of course, different florals on here, uh, of course, different uh, leaves on here as well. And what we've done, because obviously it was this wonderful takeover show, you have different colorways as well. So these are just glorious. You've got things like carnations in here, you've got things like peonies in here, you've got lilies in here, you've got freesias in here, you've got chrysanthemums in here. And having that difference of colour means you can really start crafting for all occasions. For the demonstration we're going to be doing today, uh, the MIDI florals are going to fight, feature quite heavily and we're using a pink and white combination. So really, really lovely colour palette. But there are other colours. I mean, you've just seen them used here on that card created. I think this was Tina um, in the pink. But you've also then got them on the card you've just seen in the blue. And you see, because they have that MIDI size, it really lends itself to a different range of card sizes and a different way of using. Here, we're choosing to use a few of them nestled together to make bouquets, okay? So they work brilliantly as tuck-ins, really, really beautiful flowers. But also, you can use them independently on the front of a card for something really pared back and simple as well. Uh, I'm just going to check uh, the questions coming in, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, a couple of people say in the video frozen, I think that has to do with my phone going off. Sorry. <laughs> Mark's here, my boss. Hello, Miss Hannah. Hello, Mr. Mark. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Marion says, hi, Hannah and everyone from... 
uh, Litham St Anne. Sorry I'm late new to Carnation Crafts. Well welcome, it's always lovely to have new people joining us. And don't ever worry about being late, we always upload the uh, tutorials and shows to uh, not only Facebook but our YouTube channel afterwards as well so you can watch back at any time which is fabulous. A couple of people saying my sound isn't working, you need to check on Facebook your settings uh, along the bottom of your screen. I can't exactly remember what it looks like but there is like a little speaker um, if you click on that, it will change your sound settings. I can see from my output here, our mics are, are working just fine. So unfortunately, it's probably your end. So just, just check on that for you now. Vera says the florals are fabulous. Absolutely. And do you know what, guys? If you head on over to our um, Facebook group, Carnation Crafters, um, you can view all of the different things. So it's a group of obviously Carnation Crafters, our wonderful Carnation Army, who go in there and they share their designs uh, that they've made with, with cards and your designs as well. And what's lovely is it gives so much more inspiration. Um, Denise says, new to Carnation Crafts, do you have tutorials for how to colour these to get the beautiful looks? We will be going through all of that today, Denise. Uh, the colours that you see uh, both on the den. Uh, I was going to say boards, but I'm not using boards, apologies, on the samples and on the demos that we will be doing are what we call vignettes. So they're downloadable artwork available uh, for the original colourways for free from our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk. Download them, uh, print them out on nice quality paper, so your pro printing paper on high quality print settings, and then pop them through your die cutting machine with your dies laid on top. We do have tutorials on how to do that on our YouTube channel, and if I remember, I will link yeah, to the videos as well for you. What's up next? What's up next? Oh, goodness me, I get so excited. I've done it wrong. Let's just start that again, shall we? Shall we do that again? There, that was me getting overexcited. <laughs> so we have also got included within this collection, your characters. So these are delivery mice. If you're fans of Carnation, you'll know throughout the past, um, coming up actually to three years now, um, Mice feature uh, in, a, in quite a few of our collections and the mice get up to all sorts. So here are our delivery mice. You have one holding a whole stash of parcels. That particular mouse looks very much like my Amazon driver who uh, comes basically every day, um, sometimes with things for me, but mainly with things for Dawn Wheeler because she gets everything delivered to my house including an oven. I've said it on air before, literally an oven. We've got a huge box waiting for her today. So Dawn, if you were watching, by all means, pop on by and pick up your, your deliveries today. Uh, you've got your little uh, mouse with his little satchel as well. He's getting his ready to get his letters out to put through the door. And you've got obviously, then you're like postal worker mouse with his little, um, Oh, what would you call that? Like a little trolley almost of little parcels as well. Again, the lovely thing about this collection is the mice have different coloured uniforms. So you can have this almost little nod to Royal Mail, Hermes, DPD, DHL, UPS, Amazon, all those kinds of uniforms in the different, different colourways. And it just makes it so much fun. What I have seen in group is some beautiful examples of these being used um, alongside other collections such as Just Passing By, which launched uh, uh, what, last week on Create and Craft, where you've got this kind of street um, and doors and things like that, and uh, post boxes, of course. Um, I've also seen the mice used very cleverly with, um, I, think, I think it was Steve, apologies if it wasn't, um, uh, floral heights because again it's another collection where you've got a door so you're beginning to get that wonderful cross pollination between the collections here they're just a little bit of fun these could be delivering anniversary cards these could be um, sending birthday wishes it's about telling that story on the front of your card now talking of things like birthdays how's about an absolutely divine birthday cake here we have celebrate with cake because the most important um, celebrations you have throughout the year are going to be your birthdays, anniversaries, engagements, weddings, all of those sort of things are going to feature a cake at some point. Within this die set, you've got your flowers to also decorate your cake. You've got your happy couple and also your candles. Now, it's really worth noting, we did talk about um, cross-pollination between collections, but... The wedding couple there, uh, the husband and wife, uh, independently. So you can use wife and wife and husband and husband on the tops of your cakes if you wish. But they're taken from the Fairy Tale Day collection. So if you have that collection, you already know this is going to work in beautifully with that. Here is a stunning example of our beautiful cake. See how Janine, thank you Janine, has taken the time to shape and curve the cake out so it looks really full, layered, rich, 
yummy, just yummy, yummy, yummy. Again, those midi florals are featuring to give you a little frame to that cake as well. And Janine's chosen to use the, the flowers from the set to then decorate that cake as well. I love it. I think it's so, so beautiful. Our next is light as air. This is gorgeous. This is so beautiful. So this is our butterfly collection. You've seen it on a few samples already, but what better way to team in with your flowers than to have your butterflies swooping in, nestling on those flowers, uh, sucking the, the nectar and things like that. We've again, we've brought you a uh, different colorways within these. So you've got your sort of, a, I think these are called cabbage whites, aren't they? And I think these ones here are called your um, emperor, I think, or peacock butterfly, something like that. But again, those different colorways. So depending on which flowers you're working with, you can mix and match your butterflies in. You've got three different sizes, small, midi and large, which means again, uh, you can work with different combinations, have them swooping up the side of the card, for example, um, or on different size cards as well. Included within that collection are two little filigree tuck-ins. Uh, they don't come with vignettes because they're designed to be cut from your coloured card. And again, tucking them into your floral designs are going to look beautiful. Our next die set, I was going to say final, but it isn't, uh, within this collection is the A Vintage Letter. Think about things like wedding invites, think about things like scrapbooking, journaling, all that sort of thing where you would include this sort of vintage vibe, this more sort of shabby chic look. And actually, I'm smiling because I'm looking at my demos and things that I've got for next week. We have a collection launching next week, um, which would work so beautifully, so, so beautifully with the vintage letters as well. Again, just a little nod to the past. And again, so much beautiful detailing within this set. Our final die set that we've got included within the Delivered in Style is our sentiments. Really lovely, bold designs on these sentiments. You've again seen them on a few of the cards, but they feature as toppers. Beautiful font on these. We've got Have a Great Birthday and Fantastic to Hear Your News, which I think is a lovely open-ended sentiment, isn't it? Because that could be a new baby, a new job, a graduation, all sorts of wonderful things. Engagement, for example, a new home. That ticks all boxes. So, that, so these sentiments are going to work beautifully throughout the year for you, which is fantastic. Um, so that is your Delivered In Style collection. It is priced at, let me just check my notes, $149.99. Now, don't forget within our newsletters that we send out on a Friday and at the start of the month, we give you a reminder for the monthly code. Check back on that because you can get an extra little bit off of your um, purchase today by entering the code. And the um, stock number for that, if you're looking for it on the website, you can just click on the home banner. It will take you through to the Delivered In Style web launch. Um, but the code, if you're looking for the whole Delivered In Style collection is 211013. That's 211013. Um, Oh, thank you, Carnation. Carnation just answering uh, the new customer there, whereby they were asking about the um, vignettes and how you achieve that. And, we, and they've really kindly just sent the link to our YouTube video. So thanks, guys, for doing that. Um, Star says, what size are the sentiments? Looks around desperately to see if I have my runa. I do not. Sentiments are, let me do a little guesstimate for you. Um... One, two, three, four, about four and a half inches at the widest point by one, two, two and a bit, just about, okay? So again, that nice size for the tops of your cards there. And we will be using uh, the sentiments in the demonstration as well. Now, next up, I've got to touch on here we go, the eyelet and ring collection. Now, okay, so first things first, I'll see this launch this morning. Oh, there you go, look, Foundation Crafts are on it today. Thank you so much, guys, that they've just sent through all the list of these sizes, and that's actually worth noting. Uh, if you go onto our website, click on any one of our dies and click on uh, information, scroll down, and you'll see uh, things like the, uh, it will take you links for the vignettes, it will show you what collection the item is from, and it will give you the measurements as well. So that's a really, really great tip. Thanks, guys, for reminding me of that. Um, I didn't ring, right. 
So this launched off obviously at the same time as Delivered in Stars. So it's due for launch uh, this morning on our website. When we came to launch, it was very clear this was very, very popular and sold out very, very quickly. So huge apologies to anyone that missed out. However, literally one minute before we went live, the team have been working their socks off behind the scenes. And what they have done is made sure we've got extra coming in uh, as soon as they can from our manufacturers. Um, and I'm really excited to announce you can actually pre-order these. So we are, um, a couple of the individuals have sold out. Uh, a couple of the others are very close to selling out. So if you are just looking for the individuals, I'd grab what you would like now. However, um, I think it's probably already set up now. If not, it will be done so in the next few, few moments. Um, you can pre-order this full collection. So if it's the full collection you are after, it is going to be available for pre-order. The pre-order delivery date is a dispatching from the 27th of February. I know it's a little bit of a wait, but when we show you what you can do with these dies, I think you'll agree it's absolutely worth the wait. These are going to be so well loved within your collection. We call them a nested die for the simple fact that you've got obviously what looks like the traditional nesting design. So you've got your squares, your diamonds, uh, your circles, your DLs, your rectangles and your ovals. They do so much more than just a simple nested look, okay? We are going to go over it in the demonstration. I didn't want to take that part of the demonstration out um, because I know a lot of you guys have already got these home uh, from the initial launch and would love ways to play with them. So I'm still bringing you that part of the demonstration. But this this just takes it just takes crafting to the next level let me show you have i got any yeah okay this is a really lovely example so this is just a really simple way of using the nested dies okay so ring and eyelet so this is the ring for the squares this card's designed by fiona as you can see we've got the sentiment on there we've got the florals we've got the butterflies but look how you could achieve this gorgeous very very elegant neat beautiful framing device lovely geometric look as well so a great way of including a, a little bit more of a modern look to your cards perhaps and a different way of framing rather than having your traditional mats and layers very very pretty that's using the uh, rings from the square okay same die set well then cut in your eyelets so when we say eyelets it's these sort of dot and dash edge to your design those cut into your card i'm just seeing if i've got any others yeah i do here we go the ovals okay similar sort of way for that framing device this time again with the um ring version and i will be showing you how to use those in just a moment when we come to do the demonstration as well so don't worry you'll get full demonstration of those a final die set that launched today Again, another tour de force when it comes to engineering from uh, Carnation Crafts is the multi box die. Sorry, I should have said, if you're looking for the eyelet and ring, let me bring that back onto screen whilst I'm talking about it. It's um, for the full collection, the code is 211024. That's 211024. Um, it's priced at 119.99. So that's for your circle, diamond, square, DL, oval rectangle and your uh, accessories remember i say it all the time check your newsletters and include your discount code in there as soon as the pre-order goes live um you'll you'll see a little note come up but you can leave your email address as in the get an alert box so it will flag when there's stock available so it's well worth doing that if you're sitting waiting for that pre-order or, or you're waiting for stock to come in for whatever dice set it may be you can use you can click into the product um, go into the product itself, scroll down a little bit and it will say get an alert. If you leave your email there and click the get an alert button, you will receive a message when the dies come into stock. Now, our final one, the multi box. This is so exciting. We are just inundated with queries when it comes to okay i've made this beautiful card with lots and lots of layers on it. How do I post it? You know, how do I post it safely? How do I gift it safely? This is perfect. This is the multi box. Again, we will be doing a full demonstration on the multi box as well. We have got a YouTube tutorial on how to put this together, but what it essentially creates um, 
in its most simplistic form is a four and a quarter inch box, a six and three quarter inch box and a nine and three quarter inch boxes. So already you're ticking all the sizes from your small square cards right up to your larger squares cards as well. There are other combinations on how to use this. I'm not going to go over it fully in this video because I feel like that needs its own video in its own right. And I will film that um, not next week. I think uh, I think it's logged for a Facebook Live in a couple of weeks. So do keep an eye on the events page for that. Um, but what you're doing here, you've got your four corners essentially to make your base. You would then use your four corners again for your lid. You stick them together, you follow the process that's laid out and it creates your different size boxes. You've got different size depths as well. So depending on how much decoupage you've added to the layers on your card, it will accommodate that. And whenever you're working with your multi-box die, I recommend using nice heavyweight cardstock, nice construction weight, um, so it can be safely transported as well. What's lovely about creating a, a box to match your cards is, of course, you can decorate it. You can decorate it to go with the whole kind of theme of your card. So here is one by Janine. Thank you, Janine. This is featuring the nine and three quarter inch. Janine's also used the midi florals and the fantastic to hear your news, kindness and sentiment um, sentiments there as well. And doesn't it just make the world a difference? Rather than just using a plain white, what Janine's decided to do is download the free backing papers from the Delivered In Style collection and work those into her design. And she's also included the accessories from the Eyelet and Ring collection there just to frame and finish that as well. So, so pretty. And doesn't it make much more of a spectacle? Doesn't it make much more of a grand entrance if you like for your cards you take so long and so you know puts pour so much love into making your cards make a box to go with it as well it just makes it such a special special finish as i said i will be going over that in the demonstration as well i'm trying not to take too long going through the the collection because we've got so much to do with this demonstration as well i'm just gonna have a little check back make sure i'm not missing anything elizabeth says that box is gorgeous yeah isn't it beautiful um Let's just check. Let's just check. Uh, June says, I've just received my Delivered In Style collection. It's amazing. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, June. Do let us know if you are um, going to be crafting along with us today, which would be really lovely. Um, yeah, lots of love coming in for the DT samples. Huge thank you to the DT. Okay, so let's have a think. We're going to go through, I'm going to go through the 3D backdrops because I did promise that. We're going to go through a card demonstration. We're going to touch on the eyelet and ring and we're going to make a box as well. We're going to do it all in this demonstration. So I think really we should probably crack on. Okay, top down view. First up, let's have a look at the 3D backdrop. So these are how your dies will be delivered to you. You, every single die comes within its own storage wallet, which I think is really, really handy. I have mine um, for dies that I use often. They sit in a little basket like this, so I can just flick through. I can read the names on the top corner there, and it just keeps everything nice, neat and tidy. When you come to remove your dies from their packaging, you'll see... Both the rectangle and the circle work in a similar way in that you have your outer most dies, which can be your mats and layers. They can be your um, card blanks. They could be apertures, all sorts of things. The dies then that have the little uh, cut in blossoms, if I just gently ease them out of the packaging like so, you'll see with the circle, it's in three parts. Let me take them all out. Notice when I'm taking the dies out of the packaging, there is a specific way of doing it. I did see a post on our Carnation group um, where people were having difficulty removing the dies from the packaging. Ease the cardboard away from the dies, okay? And then it just springs, the spring, dies spring for you. You're not then bending the dies or anything like that. You're just taking them out of the packaging. If you are struggling, perhaps you have dexterity issues or anything like that, you can use a heat tool on the reverse and just loosen the glue on the sellotape a little bit. But always remember, bend the packaging away from the die and they come away just like so. So when you are using these, this gives you so much more craftability because you've got an option here. You can, let me just find how these layer up like so. You can you choose to use them. Let me grab a, a sheet of white card so not 
that's a bit better. So you can choose to use it as in its entirety, okay? So that will cut into the card and create the kind of backdrop we saw on one of the card samples that I'm just looking for. Let's go on more piece, where is it? Here it is. So by using all three together, cutting into a card, remember these three don't have an outside cutting blade, it will give you this circle. It might be that you want just a wreath. So take the two center dies away. It might be that you're working on a smaller card for a little Christmas wreath. These would look stunning with the wreath maker tucking in uh, your pine cones, your hollies, uh, your berries, all sorts of things. So many different ways of using these. If you want to cut them out in their entirety, you would then grab the inner matten layer. Let me just peel that away, remember, gently easing like so. You just move those for a minute. And then you would line up your cutting edge, just finding the right combination for that. Just turning it until it slots into place. They kind of just hug in perfectly together like so. You see how that then slots in just like so. That then means you can cut this out of your card as well, which will give you, if we're thinking about it in the terms of a rectangle, that's your outside cutting edge chosen to cut out, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Obviously then take some time to um, go in and lift all of the beautiful petals and things like that to give that lots of shape and dimension. For the card I'm going to be working with today, we're going to be working with the midi florals, we're going to be working with the eyelet and ring and the box and light as air. I keep seeing lots of different things in front of me, but I wanted to create something a little bit different for you. And again, we're going to go over how we use those circular dies as well. So let's get cracking with this card demonstration. We're working with the Delivered in Style cardstock. Really lovely colours in this. Again, lots of different colours within this one. Uh, as I mentioned during the um, show preview, we're going to be doing this on a pink theme, pink and white theme. So I'm starting with my base. I'm working on an 8x8 card shape, just checking everything's opening the right way. And I'm also working on my multimedia mats. I'm holding in place, peeling, my finger lift tape from around the side. You've probably seen me do this in many, many demonstrations. Just allows me to get everything nice and straight. Next layer goes in again, finger lift tape. What we're doing is we're taking the carrier sheet of the tape and folding it over the edge of the card. That needs a little bit of burnishing. Let me grab my bone folder. If you're finding that tape is trying to lift when you are trying to take the carrier sheet off, just burnish it down. So sort of flatten it down to the card and your carrier sheet will come away. We're folding it over the edge of the cardstock like so to create little tabs all the way round. That means when we come to a line, we're not committed to that stick. We can take our time to align everything. Then hold the layer in place as we peel away all the way around, which is just such a lovely way of working. So let's just do that again. Taking the carrier sheet of the pickle lift tape over the edge of the cardstock we're working with all the way around and then lining. Now this one, um, as I mentioned on uh, Janine's box design is one of the free to download backing papers for the Delivered in Style collection. And what we do with the backing papers, if you're not familiar with them, we give you a whole host, lots and lots and lots of different backing papers, lots of different textures, lots of different designs. And what that does for you and what that means, let me just adjust that because I can see my phone's gonna try and jump out of the camera holder. It gives you um, a lovely textured background onto which you can begin working with, okay? The backgrounds, the same as the artwork we use for the vignettes, um, for the die cuts, is all colour coordinated, same as the, the perfect papers there, which gives you such a lovely, kind of like a streamlined finish to your cards. No matter which one you're going to be working with, you can rest assured it's all going to match in together. Now, general construction for this card, we're going to have our circles featuring from the eyelet and ring. Apologies, I am aware that the circles have sold out. As I've said, they will be on pre-order um, if they're not already. Uh, ready for the end of February. Um, 
but because so many people would have got this home from the launch show um, on Korean Craft, I'm still going to sort of crack on with the demonstration. And again, it, it works as a reference point for when you get your dies home as well. So we'll have our little circle. It's nice to break up a background by having more of a sort of central theme, a central look to your card design, onto which we're then going to go in with the MIDI florals. I've cut quite a few and they're laid out in front of me just up here. So I could go in and adjust and add things however we want. We've got butterflies to go on the end as well. But essentially, we're going to build up this floral look. OK, so if you're looking at this particular section, you thinking, right, how do we achieve that? And let's show you here. We have the eyelet and ring circle. Within this die, this nested die set, there are two different types of dies. OK, you've got your rings, which have both an outer and an inner cutting edge, which will cut those fine, beautifully detailed little uh, ring design mats and layers like you've seen on here. OK, similarly, if you're then working in conjunction with the eyelet, these don't have an outside cutting edge and it's this kind of dot and dash design. These then cut into your card. OK, so what I'm going to do um, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to cut these so you can see the differences. So I'm using my largest eyelet and my largest ring in conjunction with one another. I'm lining them up on my cardstock. This is just, I think, uh, 240 GSM Perfect Smooth, just plain white cardstock. And because I'm going to be working with dies that I want to be sending aligned through my die cutting machine, I'm going to be working with my tape. This is repositionable tape. It's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, whenever you're sticking repositionable tape down, just take this extra sticky off on your clothes like so before we align. If you are creating something whereby you're going to keep the middle or, or however it happens to be, try and position your tape so the majority of it is going to be sitting on the cutaway. Because even though it's repositionable, when it goes to the machine, it kind of gives it like an extra bit of stick. Um, so it makes it a little bit stronger. Um, and you don't want to be sort of risking tearing the inner, inner surface there. I'm going to use my plate combination. Uh, I'm using my Gemini Pro. Again, lots and lots of different um, discussions going on in groups about plate combinations and things like that. I can only share with you the plate combination I found to work and what I like working with with my machine. Um, I use my clear plate, frosted plate. I then use, oh, it looks like I've got how many sheets? Three sheets of 300 GSM cardstock. Then I use my die taped to whatever it is I'm cutting cutting side up okay that's really important when it comes to the pressure of your machines I then always 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 can't stress this enough use my cut tidy and you're seeing my cut tidy <laughs> how many times has that gone through my machine it's a well-loved piece but it's reusable so just keep using it this will stop um a lot of the transfer of marks from your cutting plate to your um finished cut piece um, it will also give you that extra little bit of pressure as the, the dies go through the machine, okay? Then top plate. And I always rotate the top plates so I'm cutting them um, at different degrees, okay? And that's the sandwich I use. I can only speak for what I use. Into the machine it goes. Cup tidy will also catch all the little bits as well, which is really handy. It keeps things nice and tidy in your craft area. And if you are doing things like paper piecing, for example, it's great for that as well. Okay, let's have a little look. So I'm just going to remove that. Oops, sorry, not the camera. Me being over exuberant there. And we're going to gently ease away the tape. Like so. That then goes on my machine for another project for another day because we don't like waste. Like so. So this is going to have cut your ring so you're nice fine just take it out gently so i don't bend it so your nice fine 
ring design like you've seen in the square so that can be used in a project either use a little bit of uh, our everyday glue on the back with a glue applicator because obviously it's nice and fine or if you're going to be cutting lots and lots of these do consider using things like um wild spider adhesive sheet it's an adhesive roll that you can stick to the back of your projects then die cut and it will mean it got sticky all the way along on your designs the other part that it's cut because obviously we're using the eyelet, so you, you, sorry, your ring, so you've got your outside and inside cutting edge, so it's then cut our circle out for us, is the eyelet, okay? So it's giving you all of these beautiful dosh and dat designs, which is perfect. Great for just adding an extra edge to your mats and layers. Really lovely if you're doing things with perhaps tiny lights, you get a little bit of shine through these. Lovely if you're using a lot of pattern backgrounds and things like that, because obviously you get the little glimmer behind those dosh, dot and dashes it's a bit of a mouthful but because the eyelid doesn't have an inside cutting edge and we're only using that that two die combination it's then left the center ready for whatever it is you want to be working with really lovely little way of using those die sets let me just lift my plates and pop those off to one side so I've used those sort of combinations. I've used those kinds of setups. I've looked at the dies and the shape and size of my card and then used a combination of the rings on the outside and the inside to create this um, donut shape, for want of a better word. We then used two of the eyelets on the inside and then I've decorated further with um, cutaway ring designs from the Perfect Papers as well. So it gives you an idea of how you can be creating these combinations. Now also included within the eyelet and ring collection is the accessory pack. So you've already seen a couple of ways of how you use these die sets. Let's give you yet another way of designing. The accessories will cut these strips. So you've got them both in a strip design and also in a, like a rope effect one. Let me see if I can find that box again. because That's got a nice example of, yeah. Let me just hold that up to camera. So the rope effect gives you the cuts on the inside as well, which is quite a nice way of mixing things up. And then I'm using the plain ones for this demonstration. Uh, Francis has just asked, Hannah, what die cutting machine are you using, please? I am using the um, Gemini Pro. It's the machine I use. So we're going to weave, okay? So we're going to take that accessory strip and we're going to weave it underneath the initial edge there we're going to then because I've done two you don't have to do two but I thought two makes it quite fun weave it through the other side it's going to come out of your middle we're then going to go straight across the die itself and then we're going to go oops sorry got that wrong up and down just like so and you see how you're creating this wonderful woven look to your card. I just think it's fabulous. I think it's such a really amazing look to your card designs. Now, whenever we're doing this, it's really nice to go in and consider um, adding a couple. So you've got um, four strips we'll cut from the accessories. And it's kind of like almost like lacing. Of course, you could achieve this kind of look uh, with ribbons. For example, if you're looking uh, for other inspiration, that would be a really nice way of weaving with your card designs. But we're just going to weave your two through and then adjust so they sit nice and straight as well. I just think there's something so pretty about that backdrop. We're going to go across the bottom as well, just to give you a little point of difference. Uh, we're going to choose which ones should we go in with that one there I think is going to weave nicely because you've got sort of the the space on the the length of the dash here you've got areas in which you can choose to then adjust and add in and just pull that tail through now when it comes to crossing the the strips running downwards you want to weave on those as well because I think it just really adds to the whole texture of the piece so we've come up let's go under there and you get that lovely sort of cross hatch look and then we go up through one of the dashes opposite 
just tugging that a little bit so we get a little bit of extra length and then tucking like so okay and adjusting each time we go so you see how you're now kind of sectioning off this whole look this whole design to this card design our final little piece oh, i can hear you there we go um and then we go always takes me a moment to think right which way am i doing this <laughs> um we're gonna go up no no we're not gonna go up at all we're going down sometimes it's easier to come from the other direction down so you're basically following the same layout as what you've just done on the previous one up and down there's something so um, methodical about this as well and it, it really feels like um, so much more of a hands-on card in that you're you're physically creating this this lattice work on the frame itself so here because we went over on this side let's just catch all of those together and go um, under and over this time around and then just make sure we're following that same up and down from your design like so there we go so that's giving you a really lovely backdrop element so you see how it gives you something a little bit different something um just fun just more geometric to your designs now obviously we've got the ends of the accessories sticking out that's not a problem what we can do is just turn our um, piece over i'm going to use um, some glue but i'm probably going to go over this with let's just grab some foam pads as well so let's go for a double, double whammy on this keep everything nice and secure and because i know what i'm like with glue um this is our everyday clear glue i'm using um i'm going to go in with my glue applicators as well just so i can get the glue right into where i would like the glue to sit and the idea here is you want the glue just along the length of the ends to hold those ends in place so we're just sticking everything down to make it nice and secure just turning and sticking those edges like so notice how i'm sticking before i cut any of the excess away there's a very good reason for that it just means you line everything properly you've got enough of the accessory there the little strip there and you're not cutting anything too prematurely whereby you might end up then having to redo or recut not the end of the world if you do but sticking first cutting later is always the easiest way to go about things like so so just all the way around and stuck those in place I'm just going to lay that down just give those an extra little squidge so that nice and secure got a couple of them trying to escape and then before I cut again, I'm still going to go in with my foam pads. So my foam pads are going to be used all the way around. See how we can space them to give a little bit of lift. I don't want to stick this panel straight to the surface of my card. I want a little bit of lift with this, create a little bit of drop shadow to give a little bit of dimension to the card design. Normally, um, I would have the foam pads in place and things like that. So I'm, I'm not sort of tending to waste demo time or anything like that. Um, but because I'm doing the weaving, I wanted to just get everything settled in place before I take the foam pads to it. So I'm, I'm using those foam pads as an additional little bit of stick, half on the um, strips there, half on the ring itself just to keep everything nice and secure it just gives you an extra little bit of bolstering all the way around the design and let's just see if i'm getting it any queries now i seem to have covered everything let me just have a little scroll back uh, carol says yes they are on advanced order perfect yes so that means uh, the the uh, ring so the eyelet and ring collection which is 211024 is available on our website carnation crafts for pre-order right to snip down i'm going to flip it over to the right side sharp pair of scissors and we're just following the edge so you're butting your scissors up against the edge of your circle here and just letting that circle guide you we're not putting too much force we're not trying to cut into the circle or anything like that we're just going around and snipping away the excess and because we've got that double whammy of the glue and the foam it's keeping at those little uh, tags those little accessory strips just beautifully secure just get away the excess 
there and we are going to stick so i kind of want it as a, a little shape off to one side let's just remove the carrier sheet off of the back of these foam pads i'm not going to worry if i can't get the the carrier sheet off all of them but it's just enough so we've got sticky all the way around you don't want any of your 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 rings sort of sagging in any areas it just gives you a little bit of lift like so make sure i'm not missing any questions <laughs> I didn't realise, <laughs> Sue, well, you've made me giggle. I didn't realise they're in shot, actually. That's that's quite bad of me. She says, I've just spotted your mini eggs in the corner of your shop. Girl after my own heart. I literally, it sounds awful, um, but Simon and I are expecting our, our second baby. We're very, very excited. But my cravings for sugar have been absolutely insane this pregnancy. I can't get enough of sweet things. And I'm I'm quite bad when it comes to chocolate anyway. We do have a chocolate shelf in the fridge, controversial, I know. But I, I have to snack when I'm crafting. Um, so I've got my emergency mini eggs on standby should I need a little sugar hit during this, this Facebook Live. <laughs> okay, so we've got our foam pads on. We're just gonna make sure we are lining that pretty much centrally and then just tapping that into place like so. So really at this stage, I mean, we could absolutely, if you wanted to just bring in a sentiment and that's gonna look gorgeous in its own right perhaps have a great birthday, something like that. You know, that would look lovely as a finished card. But because we got that luxury of working with the Delivered In Style collection, we're gonna go in with florals because I just think it's such a pretty, pretty, oh, I love it, I just love it. I think it's so beautiful. That with sentiment on, gorgeous, you're done. You don't need anything else. We're gonna build it though. We're gonna build in a few. I've got, as I say, lots and lots to choose from in front of me. Best way of crafting, especially with your middies, uh, both of the original set and the, the second version here. Cut lots and have lots out in front of you because it gives you so much more to craft with. So we're gonna begin sticking. I'm gonna go in with this pink theme. This is a lily. Just begin where I'm working with these and notice how I've just wound those through that woven strip that we've been working with, okay? Little bit of pin flare on the black back just to give it a little bit of lift. And I've already shaped all of these. So when it comes to shaping, just to quickly touch on that, take your dense foam mat and your ball tools. These are an absolute must have in your collection and round them off. And do you see how that petals, the petals are all curling up and folding up it's just so so lovely because it means it gives it a lot more dimension it gives it height it gives it a point of difference and it gives it a really lovely realistic look so in with the carnation as well to make sure we're keeping that height add in a little bit of your pin flare and again think about placement we're building this bouquet all right we've got a few of things like the freesias here again I've, as i say i've shaped all these out already so they're ready to go it is sometimes easier when you're creating your florals to lift and tuck as you go. So before you put any pin flare, then once you're happy with placement, go in and add your three dimensional glue gel. Um, obviously my, my glue of choice is pin flare. We do sell it on our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk. Um, I know there's lots of different versions out there. I tend to go for Plim Flare because it, it's just so, so good at keeping its height and dimension as well. Um, I think let's go in with another one of those beautiful long line flowers. So all these die cuts that I'm using have been cut using what we call our mirrored vignettes. So it's this beautiful artwork that's designed to match in with our collections, match in with our designs. And it just allows you to create these wonderful images, these wonderful colours and things on the fronts of your cards. So you don't have to be an expert colourist or anything like that. You've got the choice to go in and print these out, lay your dies over the top and cut them. As I've said earlier, we do have a full um, YouTube tutorial on how to achieve these looks. Um, you can obviously colour them if you wish, if you prefer working like that. But I think having the option is, is a really nice thing when it comes to crafting. I think we need a little bit of a backdrop. For the leaves, I tend to use my pokey tool. And we can run that pokey tool along one side of the leaf, have our thumb over the other, and it gives this wonderful curved effect. You can go in and then twist and tuck as well. So these leaves, I'm going to just slip in behind 
a lily. So just being careful to lift and tuck as we go. Trying not to adjust the positioning too much because obviously I've got my glue on the backs, but it doesn't matter if I want to change things up just a little bit. You've got options at this stage, so to speak. Uh, let's go in with the carnation as well, another one of the whites. I'm not going to overload this card with too many because I think it's um, sometimes a little bit less is more. But just by having a few in the backdrop there, I think it just brings um, such a wonderful look, such a wonderful quality to the designs. I'm going to slip the eucalyptus in just behind as well in the whites um, or the sort of silver whites, I think is, is, a, is a good description. Um, because I feel it just breaks up the backdrop just a little bit. And I'm just lifting and tucking as we go. Do you see how by layering your flowers, you're giving it a very realistic look. It does look like the kinds of things you would um, think to see within a florist as well. Another little floral just behind our chrysanthemum there to give that a bit of a backdrop. I do feel like I need a few little tuck-ins. So I think what I'm gonna to do to achieve that is cut down one of these particular designs. Paul has asked, um, how long does the pin flare take to dry? If you're making with pin flare, uh, what I'd suggest is leaving it a good 24 hours before popping it in the post. That just makes sure it's nice and hard and you're not gonna get any bits which are, are kind of um, damaged or sag or squished in the post or anything like that. So yeah, a good, good 24 hours before you decide to post, Paula. Uh, Ida says, hello from Florida. Hello, Ida, thank you for joining us. Let's add in just a few little tuck-ins. Again, using a combination of larger florals and then little tuck-in florals, it, it mixes up the space. It adds, adds interest to your card designs. For these, I don't know why I'm struggling with my, my fingers. I should probably have got my tweezers, but I have no idea where they've gone. Um, Let's just grab that and then again a little bit of everyday glue on the bottom using our glue applicators and then just nestling that in behind the chrysanthemum like so. A few more little tuck-ins just to draw in that same look, that same feel and we're repeating. So obviously you wouldn't have just one flower in a bouquet would you? You'd have them repeated along the length of a bouquet. And then a final one just at the top. You kind of want to create this kind of like almost like a little snake effect. So it looks like everything here is tucked into one another. Everything's working in tandem. Just coming out from behind that section there. Do you know what? I think, I think I'm going to say that's enough for the minute. It might be that I come back to it. But actually, I think that's a really powerful statement for the front of the card, using that eyelet and ring a circle, using that woven look. You still see the weaving behind where I've placed the florals, but having those florals all nested into it is really lovely. Another thing just to note with the midi florals and also the eyelet, look how you can tuck them in. So you do have this little stalk on your um, smaller tuck-in flowers. That's designed, if you want to, to just simply add in to the designs of the eyelet there. And do you know, I think it's just such a wonderful thing because it gives you options on how you can craft with them. I'm going to take those out for another day. So that's my card finished. OK, I'm going to say that's done. I'm happy with how that looks. But obviously it's going to need a box to sit in. Now let's grab <laughs> the box. So this time around, we are going to be using that multi-box die set. Let me just bring it into shot so you can see. As we've been through already, it will create a nine and three quarter inch box, a six and three quarter inch and a four and a quarter inch. You've then, of course, got filigrees. It will create pockets. So if you're looking for things like journaling and things like that, it's going to look really beautiful as little tuck-ins on uh, journals or scrapbooks or even the fronts of cards as well. But essentially, you need to cut whichever size it is. We're going to be working with a nine and three quarter inches. So I've cut eight of those from 350 Perfect Smooth cardstock. Nice heavyweight construction card weight, okay? Because we're going to be making a box. We want it to be sturdy. I've already 
I've got my sentiment ready to go for my box. Let me just get my elements out of the way. Okay, so I've already begun construction on the box and the lid. I'm just popping those out of the way so we can just show you how this works. So we're taking that larger size die from the pack and we're cutting it eight times, okay? So we're just laying it onto our cardstock, running it through our die cutting machine and cutting that eight times. When it cuts, you'll find you have something that is like this, okay? It not only cuts, but it also scores, okay? And it also has your little uh, dash line effect, uh, reminiscent of your eyelet and ring collection as well. So everything ties in beautifully. When you are working with these, um, if you're anything like me and you want nice sharp corners and sharp finishes on your box edges, and by sharp, I don't mean like sharp to, to cut you, I mean neat, you know, crisp is probably a better word. You can go over the score lines with um, a scoreboard and ball tool. What you would need to do, as we said, is cut eight. So four corners for your base and four corners for your lid. Your lid, you just construct as is. OK, so you take this and you do as what we're going to do within this demonstration. For your base, you need it slightly smaller so that your lid can obviously sit on top. And you'll see when you cut on one edge, the longest edge, you have a little indicator line, a little um, embossed line. For your base, you snip all four corners on that line, okay? So that means all four corners are just slightly smaller. When you construct them, it will then make sure everything aligns properly, okay? Now, we've had a lot of discussion in group on how you can use these, and I will be bringing you another Facebook demonstration with the um, die sets themselves. Um, but there are, are different ways of constructing them. I won't go over it in massive detail because I don't want to confuse the issue. I want to bring you a demonstration whereby you can see how to use the multi-box die as is and then really get to grips with it. As mentioned before, we do already have a how-to video that you are welcome to watch back on our YouTube channel as well. And I will link it in the comments once we've finished this group. So to construct, I'm using a bone folder to fold and for this time around, so it's something slightly different to the how-to video, I'm going to be using that extra little score line to reinforce the edges. So for this one, we're going to go along and use my red liner tape. So you want a nice strong tape, construction weight tape, all the way along both the outer edge there and the outer edge here, okay? When it comes to the tab, what I tend to do is snip and then reattach. So I'm leaving that sort of um, score line free from any, any tape and that just stops it getting all sort of um, bunched up. You, you know what I mean? You don't want it too, too bunched up. We're then going to fold along that first score line. And whenever we fold, just for good housekeeping, we're going to use a bone folder to fold along the length to get that nice crisp finish to your edges of your box maker. We're then going to remove the length red liner tape in its entirety, a little stringy bit there, and then smooth that down. We can also use our bone folders to burnish that tape to make sure it's nice and stuck. And then that next side goes in like so. Okay, so on the how-to video, you'll see me create this without this extra little step in it. I'm putting this extra little step in for this video so you've got a point of difference and it shows you how you can use that extra little edge if you want a shallower box but you also want a reinforced edge with it okay same thing as well with the other edge here just sticking along the length burnishing it down and then going in folding it against itself and burnishing it down okay we then apply the tape to the outside of our tab like so and then cut that down at the length and we also need to apply our red liner tape and our strong adhesive tape to the inside of the shorter edge there okay this means when we come to tuck in our tab Again, just burnishing that down you've got your red liner tape ready to go to stick that in place 
And then you've also got the length ready to go to construct the box itself, okay? So that's how we put together a corner. We then repeat that process another three times, okay? So this, remember, is making the lid. If we were constructing this and we were creating the base, which I've already created here, we've just snipped down those lengths to make them slightly shorter. To construct, you're taking the shortest edge and sticking it to the longest edge. It's as simple as that, all the way round, regardless of whether you're doing it with the um, sort of folded down edge where you've got that extra support or whether you're doing it as without as the how-to video is but we're just taking the red liner tape off we're then butting this edge of the longer side up into this corner of the shorter side so just butting that up making sure we've got it aligned all the way along and then sticking that in place. Remember construction tape, your nice red liner tape because you're constructing a heavyweight box, okay? All the way around, we repeat that same process. Now, it is worth mentioning, obviously, we did allude to it and we will show this in another Facebook video, but if you did want to create different size boxes, you would have to obviously do a little bit of measuring, but you could like so. So you see how rather than butting that corner up, you could take it maybe an inch, maybe half an inch down and begin creating different, not only size boxes, but different shaped boxes. Just remember anything you do at this stage, you would then need to measure and repeat for your lid as well. So your lid and your box space all match together. Okay. Because we're working with a square card, I'm not going to worry about changing up the sizes or shapes or anything like that. I'm just going to continue butting that edge up into that corner okay so just taking the red liner tape off or well, the carrier sheet for the red liner tape the whole thing seems to be wanting to come away at the minute come on you let's just burnish that down just burnish that down a little bit let's see whether i can get that off sometimes you know your red liner tape does have a mind of its own doesn't it there we go so longest edge to shortest edge, butting that corner up, moving my bone folder out of the way and just making sure everything's nice and aligned. When it comes to the final corner, there's no difference here. We're still butting up longest edge to shortest edge, removing the carrier sheet as we go. and just tucking that in okay and of course we just need to fix that final edge in place so we're just going to tuck that under okay so you're always tucking that inside longest edge corner in like so and because you've done the same all the way around, that last piece just slots into place nice and easily. Now within your die set, what you also have are these squares, again, decorated in the same fashion with your dot and dash line. Going to just add in a little bit of tape on these. So red liner tape again, still working on construction here, just along one side and the opposite side as well. And we're gonna just cover that little hole. Just the way the construction works is you're always gonna have that little space in the middle. Just going to cover that with your little squares. And also it adds a little bit of support to that central section as well. Just aligning that so you've got the same all the way around and then smoothing that red liner tape into place. Flipping that box over. And again, we're gonna do the same on the outside just to neaten everything up and make that look extra special, beautifully finished, like so. Okay, hopefully.
hopefully that makes sense for your construction of your boxes. Um, as mentioned, we do have a how-to video, which you are, of course, welcome to work, watch back as a reference point as well. So just removing that red liner tape and then aligning, just taking the time to align those dots and dashes. I can never say that. And then flipping it over and just smoothing that down as well to create your lid, okay? The base has been constructed in exactly the same way. I've just snipped off on those lines that we mentioned. And we're just gonna fit that together. Nice, nice fit all the way around. I'm having to do it on my lap because obviously I can't fit it in <laughs> with the depth of the camera and things. And it's a nice snug fit. Come on you. There we go. Yeah, I just wanted to get that all nice and done all the way around for you so you can see you've got it all aligned and it's actually nice and strong by using that fold down technique to reinforce those edges it gives it a really sturdy feel you're not sort of um it doesn't feel like it's it's twisting or anything like that as mentioned the how-to video shows it without the fold down but it's just an option if you want so that's our box i felt our box needed a little bit of decoration as well so let's grab the have a great birthday from the delivered in style collection and you'll notice here what we've chosen to do is decorate this in the same colorways as that card so because our box is going to match our card everything's going to be in those same color combinations so we're using the same backing papers we're using the same white that we've used for the ring and eyelet element there so that's um, our perfect blush cardstock a white cardstock with a hint of color this one is a perfect blush rose because obviously we're going with a pink theme so it has a little bit of hint of a pink and then oops we're using the perfect papers in the pink as well just to finish that look mounted on a little bit of foam and i think let's go in and have that on the slant as well to really go in with the look of your card design i'm gonna just Go in with some foam. Again, just one mil foam, it doesn't need to be too much. It's just give that a little bit of a rise from the background of your card stock or your base is what we're using here. And let's just nestle that onto your box there. So now you've got your box created alongside your card. And obviously at this stage, if you wanted to, you can absolutely go in and decorate with a few of your florals perhaps a few of your leaves as well so the same floral design as what you've used on the outside of your card to really begin honing in um, on this feeling that you know the the outside is just as precious everything then matches together you've got the same detailing you've got the same options it's just a really lovely way of crafting because it gives you this this sense that the time has been taken to match everything together beautifully I think it's it's a very very pretty way of crafting so again just slitting, slotting in your florals depending on which ones you want to work with I don't want to hide that one too much let's just pop that up there and you see how you can create a base for your box that then matches your card as well Hopefully that's given you a few ideas on how you could be working within the Delivered In Style collection. Let me just change the camera around. Uh, let's just check we haven't got any questions coming in. No, I think we covered everything. That's fantastic. Um, I will take a picture of the card that we have created and upload that to uh, Facebook uh, group, Carnation Crafters. If you haven't joined yet, do so. Do consider joining because it's a lovely, friendly group with lots of inspiration. We will be back tomorrow with another Facebook show at three o'clock in the afternoon, bringing you a show preview of our next launch, which will be our Fond Memories, which launches next week on Create and Craft. Um, so I'll be going over some of the dyes, some of the DT uh, design team samples, um, and just a few little sneak peeks of what we cut coming up for that. And I'm just looking ahead to next week. I think we're back on... I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, but just keep an eye on our events page because we will be bringing you um, shows next week as well with lots and lots of demonstrations. Um, we have possibly another 
collection may be launching on the website next week. I'll have to check that. I need to check when it launches and that might be what the Facebook Live show will be. Until next time, which will be tomorrow at three o'clock, uh, please do join us for that. Keep safe. Keep uploading your beautiful images to our Calation Crafters um, group. Don't forget to check out and don't forget to check your um, coupons within your newsletter as well. If you're looking to purchase your delivered in style, if you're looking to pre-order your eyelet and ring. And also don't forget to add that multi-box uh, die set to your order as well today. Thanks very much. Uh, Marilyn says, I want to order items but not got newsletter, so I've not got code. How do I get it, please? Marilyn, you need to sign up for the newsletter. Head over to our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk forward slash newsletter. The next newsletter will be coming out on Friday and that will have a reminder of the codes in. So please go ahead and do that. Uh, if you've already signed up, you need to check your spam folders and then just drop us a message at um, our customer service and they can have a look at your um, status to see and make sure you are all subscribed to that as well. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us and until next time see you later bye bye